Hey guys welcome back to my channel. What if Naruto has two siblings and both fallen in love with Sakura? Movie. Jiraiya rests against the rooftop railing watching the young girl that is the mirror image of her mother. Her long hair flows behind her as she glides around the small kitchen. The last time Jiraiya saw the red-haired girl she was holding her baby brother and crying at the memorial stone in training ground 3 of Konohagakure. She was so much smaller then, now, she is a growing woman that would someday be the beauty of Konoha. The reason Jiraiya is watching his goddaughter is because today is a special day for one member of the house. His godson is starting at the academy today. His goddaughter, Mai, had gotten up earlier than usual to make her little brother's favorite food for breakfast. Naruto was going to be so happy to see all that his sister went through to make him happy, and Jiraiya could not wait to see the bright smile on the boy's face. He wishes more than anything that he could be there with his two godchildren celebrating this day, but as a spy he had to stay away for their safety. At least until they grew older and stronger. Naruto wanted to be Hokage, and Jiraiya was sure the boy could do it. My, she wanted to be a medical nin like Tsunade, but she had to give up her dream to take care of her brother. She could have been one of the best ninjas if it weren't for the incident that forced her to become a mother figure for her brother eight years ago. Life was so very unfair, especially the life of Shinobi. As Jiraiya stood and watched through the large window of the apartment he could smell the beginnings of broth, spices slowly filled the air. It took a long time to prepare ramen from scratch, but Mai has gained a lot of experience over the years, even getting some lessons from Ayame at Ichiraku Ramen. He watched her glide across the floor, her hair flowing behind her, it hurt so much to see his godchildren because they looked so much like his young student and his wife. Jiraiya felt the sudden appearance of two fellow ninja beside him, he did not move to look at them or even acknowledge their appearance. She looks just like, Kashina. Serutobi remarks, taking a puff of his pipe. Hum. Kakashi agrees. She may look like Kashina, but she is every bit Minato in heart and mind. Jiraiya states. The three shinobi watch the young woman continue to cook until all that is left is the rice. She sets the table for two then disappears further into the apartment. The observing ninja holds their breaths waiting for Naruto's appearance. Naruto. They all hear my call across the rooftops. Naruto get up. You'll be late for your first day at the academy. Nei chan. The hoarse voice of Minato reaches their ears. Jiraiya knew watching his godchildren from afar would hurt, but he did not expect for his heart to crumble to pieces. Five more minutes Nei chan Datbeo. I made ramen. Mai whispers to get her brother's attention. Ramen. Naruto shouts presumably jumping immediately out of bed. Mai chuckles before telling her brother to get ready. You got it Nei chan Datbeo. Mai re-enters the kitchen taking the rice off the stove and creating the complicated dish with only half hesitation. Naruto races out to the kitchen and finally the men release their breaths. From this distance all three veteran shinobi can believe that the two young children are their parents for a split second. Jiraiya is the first to leave, unable to take watching his godchildren. Serutobi follows seconds after while Kakashi stays watching the children of his sains. Minato would be proud of how his children grew up. How Mai became his miniature despite being the clone of his wife and Naruto being just as outgoing as Kashina. Itadakimas. The children chorus before digging into their ramen. Deciding to give the two children their privacy, Kakashi finally departs following the trail of Jiraiya and the Hokage. He will finally be with children his own age, Kakashi hears the Hokage say to Jiraiya. Naruto at least will be able to live a normal childhood. But Mai never will, as long as I'm still a spy. She will always have to be Naruto's mother. Jiraiya growls, what or who his anger is directed at is a mystery. You could always take up being their guardian. Kakashi offers, taking out his old copy of Icha Icha Paradisu. Jiraiya hesitates thinking about the option for the millionth time in the past eight years. It was the wish of his pupil to take care of his children, it has been a distant dream of Jiraiya's for many years but due to age and occupation he has never had the chance to be a father. However, he is Jiraiya of the Sanin, spy master of Konagakure, a smug and selfish perverted old man who believes himself unworthy of being Hokage due to his mass failures. A man like him is not fit to be a father to two young children who he loves more than himself. Or so Jiraiya constantly told himself. I could never do that to them. Having me in their life would put them in more danger than they already are. Jiraiya sighs, shoulders slumping forward. You could keep them safe if you took up the position of Hokage and let your old sensei finally retire. 
Serutobi says trying to lighten the conversation and convince his student to live a happier life. Jiraiya laughs, his depressed demeanor gone replaced by his exuberant attitude and over-the-top actions. Try as you might, old man, I'm not taking your hat. Jiraiya takes a small envelope out of his red howry and hands it to Serutobi. Here, it's this month's allowance. You know she is no longer accepting any help from you or the village. Serutobi states taking the envelope anyway. I know, I still feel like I should give them something. They have the money if they ever need it and I already sent Naruto a few gifts. Mai may be as stubborn as Kashina but she has never turned down anything for Naruto. I just hope he likes them. Jiraiya says, rubbing the back of his head. Working around his goddaughter and her stubborn attitude was a chore that he will never admit he enjoys doing. Only because it irritates Mai and she has no power to deny Naruto anything, even if it is gifts from his godfather, who she denies even exists. Are they toad based again? Kakashi asks knowing full well that they are. Jiraiya shrugs. The kid has good taste. Anyway, see you around old man. Jiraiya shunshins away leaving the third Hokage and former Anbu leader on a roof far from the new Uzumaki residence. Asterisk four years later Mai paces the small apartment waiting for any sign or word from her brother. Last she saw of him he was painting the Hokage faces with slanderous words and comic markings. Half the Chunin and Jonin of the village were out searching for him and of course the first place they looked was home. Mai is furious. She has told him many times to be smart and not get caught when out prepping his pranks. Aruka Sama was the first to arrive at the apartment and demand to know where Naruto was. Mai could answer honestly because she really did have no idea where Naruto was, at that moment in time. Naruto has numerous hiding spots all around the village that he regularly goes to in order to avoid punishment. The other reason Mai was worrying and pacing so much was the time. It was getting close to her shift at the hospital and if she didn't leave soon, she would be late. Yet, she couldn't just leave without knowing what happened to Naruto. The best option she could hope for was that Aruka Sama finds him instead of another shinobi. Aruka has a soft spot for both Uzumaki and is a regular guest for dinner and lunches. With 15 minutes until her shift Mai starts to panic. She is too busy stuck in her own head. She does not hear the approaching footsteps outside her door and jumps when someone knocks on the door. Running to the door, Mai flings it open to reveal Aruka with a struggling Naruto in his grasp. Thank Kami-sama. Mai cries, wrapping Naruto in a tight hug. He stops struggling in his sensei's grip and hugs his sister back. Once they pull away Mai looks to Aruka. Arigato Aruka-sama. I hope Naruto did not cause you too much trouble. No more than normal. I figured I should bring him home to you before I take him to the Hokage faces to clean up his work. Aruka says not taking a step into the apartment even though he is more than welcome. Ah, sensei. Naruto complains. I agree with Aruka-sama, Naruto. Naruto whips around to gawk at his sister. Normally she tries to get him out of trouble. You were foolish enough to get caught even though you had plenty of time to cover your tracks. Mai scolds. Naruto puffs up annoyed that his sister is, in fact, right. Aruka looks a little put off that she is scolding him for not covering his tracks better instead of pranking in the first place. Kuso. Mai cries looking back at the clock and noticing she has 10 minutes to get to the hospital and clock in. Naruto, I'm so sorry but you're on your own for dinner again. I had to pick up another late shift. Mai rushes around the apartment collecting the items she needs for the night, her go bag with her work uniform, her badge and leftover paperwork from the night before. But Nei Chan, you said. Naruto begins but Mai cuts him off with another quick hug. I know. I'm so sorry. This is only temporary remember. If you're still up when I get home, we can talk about your day, but I have to go. She releases him from the hug and kisses his forehead before racing out the door and jumping from the railing. She may work a civilian job, but Mai had enough years in the academy to know how to push her chakra into her body to help her jump from incredible heights and run as fast as the shinobi around her. Naruto watches his sister leave, her red hair flailing behind her in the long ponytail she kept it in unless she was working, in which she would then pull it further up into an elegant bun. Nei Chan. Naruto whispers sadly. He was looking forward to a nice night with his sister, they haven't been able to spend dinner together in so long. Iruka stands in the still open doorway watching the twelve-year-old next to him. He could see how much his sister's departure hurt his young student. Looking into the distance where the sixteen-year-old disappeared, he wondered why she had to work so much and be away from her brother. 
he knew plenty of other civilian workers that didn't have to work nearly as much as Mai and were able to take care of their families. He would have to look into the hospital records and see how much the oldest Uzumaki was being paid. If she was working this much and still unable to support her and her brother then something must be wrong. Come on Naruto. The sooner you clean the statues the sooner I can take you to Ichiraku. Iruka says placing his hand on Naruto's shoulder in a comforting manner. Naruto doesn't even look at his sensei at the mention of his favorite restaurant. Instead, he still watches after his sister. Iruka grows genuinely concerned, the mention of ramen always gets some sort of reaction out of the young teen. Naruto. Iruka tries again, this time the young teen looks at him, but his expression is still somber. Come on, I'll help you. Iruka guides Naruto out of his home and closes the door behind them. It only took Naruto and Iruka a few hours to completely clean the stone faces of the past Hokage and sit themselves at Ichiraku Ramen. The entire time Naruto doesn't crack one joke, complain at all, or even smile when Ayame and Tuchi greet them. Iruka is growing considerably more worried about his student but cannot think of a way to bring up Naruto's mood without possibly making it worse. While they have been sad Iruka slowly ate his ramen and is almost finished, Naruto normally would be on his fifth or sixth bowl, but he has not touched his food. His chopsticks hang in his hand ready to be used but they hang over the broth creating small ripples with Naruto's breathing. Iruka sighs before starting some form of conversation. Naruto. Why would you do that to the Hokage faces? You know who they are right, and how important they are to the village. He speaks softly not wanting to startle the boy or make him think he is in trouble still. Naruto continues to look at his bowl of ramen but nod his head. They were the greatest shinobi of their time. The best of the best. Undefeated ninja legends, and the fourth Hokage is the one who saved the village from the Nine Tails Fox. Naruto says finally taking a bite of his ramen, it is small and is taken slowly. Not at all how Naruto usually eats. Then why? Naruto looks up from his bowl and towards the stone faces. Because I'm going to be greater than any of them. Naruto clutches his chopsticks in his hand, almost crushing them. I'm going to be the next Hokage. He then looks to Uruka with fiery determination in his eyes. A ninja legend. Then everyone will have to stop disrespecting Nei-chan and me. I'll be better than any Hokage before and Nei-chan will never have to work another day in her life. She can live her dream. Datbeo. Uruka stares in awe at the blonde next to him then gives a small smile. I have no doubt you will Naruto. Uruka runs his hand through Naruto's unbrushed hair getting a disapproving whine from the boy. Sensei, stop. Aruka only laughs. Mai stumbles up the stairs of her building only slightly wincing with every step, her feet hurt, and her back was in so much pain from carrying large loads of medical equipment from one part of the hospital to the other. Not once during her 10-hour shift was she able to sit and take a breather. It is one in the morning as she slowly slides into her apartment hoping not to disturb Naruto. She still has to get his lunch ready for his day at school. Mai sighs but quietly walks around the kitchen gathering all the ingredients for a simple meal that Naruto could share with his friends. Mai heard him approach, she heard him slip out of bed and walk to the kitchen where she quietly worked. Still, she sucked in a breath when Naruto spoke her name startling her out of her own head. Mai, are you just getting home? Naruto asks, rubbing his eyes. Mai nods not looking at her brother. She had promised to spend the evening with him, and she had broken her promise. This was the first time in over a month that she had free time to spend with Naruto, but she had gotten a letter asking her to come in. A large team of Anbu Ninja had just returned from an S rank mission and they did not come back in the best condition. Hey Naruto, you should be in bed. Mai says trying but failing to get her brother to go back to bed. Naruto shrugs and takes a seat at the table unpacking her overnight bag. He notices her uneaten dinner and frowns. Nei Chan. Why do you have to work so much? Naruto asks about placing the uneaten meal in the fridge. Mai had no answer for him for a while. She thought about it for a moment, with how often she worked she should be able to take care of them, but she still had to work more hours than anyone else. She has an idea why but if she finds that it is true, then what little trust she has in the village will vanish. She needs to trust the village, trust the Hokage that he knows what he is doing, otherwise she will only be bitter and full of hate. Mai can't be that person not when she has Naruto to think about. I'm not as skilled as everyone, so my pay is not as high. In order to make the same as the trained medical ninja I have to work harder doing any odd jobs the hospital needs me to do. My lies. 
She can't tell him, not yet. How is your studying going for graduation? Mai asks, turning the conversation away from her work. Naruto grumbles crossing his arms on the table and resting his head on them. I still can't figure it out, Nei Chan. I try and try but I just can't get the clone jutsu. If I want to graduate this time, I need to be able to do the jutsu. Naruto whines. Mai finishes putting Naruto's lunch in his bento, it's nothing fancy. Rice with a small portion of sukumono pickles, some edamame, baked chicken karage and a few onigiri rice balls for Naruto to share with his friends. What about your friends in school, can any of them help you? Mai asks, still not realizing that Naruto is as outcast in the academy as she was. Naruto does not look at her, instead he separates her paperwork into piles, the documents she still has to start, the ones she has to sign and turn back in and the ones she has to finish. Mai never asked her little brother to do this for her, but it was something he felt he could do to make her day easier. Naruto? Mai asks again. Finally, Naruto looks at her, he is sad and afraid about failing the graduation exam for the third year in a row. Mai sighs and sits next to her brother holding her arms open for him. Though he is much too big now he still climbs into her lap and rests his head in the crook of his sister's neck while she hugs him and rubs soothing circles on his back. It will be alright, I promise. Mai says into her brother's messy hair, he took off his sleep hat when she came home and placed it on the table while she was making his lunch. Nei Chan. What if I never become a Jenning? If I can't become a Jenin I'll never become Hokage. Naruto tried to hide his tears by not making a sound, but Mai can feel his body shake in her arms, she holds her brother closer and kisses his head. You will Naruto, you will become Hokage. I promised you I would help you accomplish your dream, and I will never break that promise. I'll talk to Hokage Gigi and see if he can do anything. You have so much power and potential, you just need someone who knows how to help you. Aruka Sama is a great sensei but he can't play favorites. You need someone who can give you all the attention and training you need to succeed. Becoming a genin and getting a sensei that can give you that time is all you need. Naruto pulled away enough to look at his sister, his eyes red but the tears gone, he smiled at her. Can you really do that Nei Chan? He asks Hope to fill him once again after so many failures. I can talk to the Hokage and tell him exactly what I just told you. He will understand and as long as you pass the written test, I'm sure he will agree to pass you. Mai smiles. If he doesn't, Mai knows a few things to say that will make the old man see things her way and agree. The only reason Naruto and Mai are treated with a fraction of respect and aren't driven out of every store they enter is because she has dirt on everyone that has ever done them wrong, and a few who haven't. It's not really an honorable way to live but it is better that the glares and harshest whispers be directed at her instead of her brother. Nei Chan, you are the best. Naruto says hugging his sister and smiling for the first time since she left for the hospital. Now, come on kitten, time for bed. Mai says slightly pushing at Naruto to get him off her now asleep legs. Nei Chan, I told you to stop calling me that. Naruto complains but gets off his sister and grabs his nightcap from the table. I'm your older sister so I can call you whatever I want. She says sticking her tongue out. Naruto returns the gesture then lets his sister guide him to bed. Unnoticed by either sibling, Kakashi Hataki lay under their kitchen window listening. Originally, he was only there to make sure Naruto was safe in the apartment by himself until his sister arrived home, but tonight something about the air made him stay put and listen. He agreed with Mai and what she had to say about Naruto's training. He just needs a sensei who knows how to work with him and give him the jutsu he can use with his abundance of chakra. Once he heard the sound of the bedroom door close, he got up from his resting spot and ran to the Hokage's office to have a word of his own with the old man. The following morning Naruto woke up ready to get the day and pass the first part of the graduation test. He woke up earlier than expected of him so he could study with his Nei Chan and help her with her paperwork. Nothing much, just filling out the basic information provided in Mai's notes. When he emerged from the shower clean and dressed in his favorite orange jacket, he stopped at the site in front of him. Sitting at the table with her paperwork sprawled out before her as Mai, fast asleep. Naruto sighs, his poor mood from earlier returned at the sight of his sister. Trying his best not to disturb his sleeping sister Naruto began making breakfast for the two of them and cleaning the table of his sister's papers but in a way she would be able to start off where she left last night before she fell asleep. He set to making the only breakfast he could without it turning into a charred mess, practicing his stealth skills to prepare the meal without making a sound that would alert the sleeping member of the family. 
for the most part he succeeded, that is until it was time for him to set the table and he couldn't reach the plates. The surprised gasp Naruto let out was enough to have Mai awake and catching the plate before it hit the floor with impossible speed. Naruto and Mai were both still and silent for a few seconds before either let out a sigh of relief followed by a tension-breaking laugh. Jeez Ked, you almost gave me a heart attack before I even had a chance to get some coffee in me. Mai laughs putting the plate on the table. She looks around hurriedly for a second searching for the papers she had last night and relaxing when she sees them off to the side next to her work stuff. Sorry Nei Chan, I didn't want to wake you. Naruto says not moving from his spot next to the stove. He is staring at the eggs with so much focus he could be cooking them with his glare. Mai notices this behavior and regrets falling asleep so carelessly. Are you mad at me? She asks taking over the job of setting the table because she can reach the plates. Naruto is silent for a long time. She knew she should have gone to sleep when she finished her third stack of papers, but the more she got done that night the more time she had with Naruto the next day. Instead of getting a few more pages done she fell asleep and Naruto saw how exhausted she was. If she kept this up Naruto might come to hate the village. She couldn't let that happen, he needed to see that the village as a whole was innocent and worthy of being protected by him. Yes, some people hated them and did all they could to make their lives difficult, but she could deal with them. Hey, kid, Mai says getting Naruto's attention finally. When you get home today why don't we go to Ichiraku and get some ramen, then I'll treat you to some dango. She smiles at him, but he turns away from her smile and continues to glare at the eggs that are almost done. Naruto, I'm sorry I fell asleep and missed all of yesterday but I promise I will be here for you today and nothing will get in our way, she says to the young boy's back. Money will. Naruto whispers. My sighs again, she didn't want to admit that they were hurting for money. They shouldn't, not with how much she works but life is an orphan taking care of a child five years younger than you and getting him through the academy is more difficult than Mai will admit. It doesn't help that her boss and half of the shops hate them both and refuse to treat them like human beings. I can handle the money. Mai says. Tightening her fists on the table trying to keep her anger in check. How? Naruto asks once the eggs are done and he can serve them onto the plates. I can figure something out, Naruto please. Her brother looks in her eyes and sees her pleading face. Let me take you out to celebrate. You will pass this test today and once I talk to Hokage Gigi you will be a genning. I want to celebrate with you Naruto. We can't afford it Nei Chan. Naruto says, and Mai slams her fists on the table. I worry about money, not you. I am supposed to take care of you, not the other way around. Mai says angry, not really at her brother but at the life they have been given and the suffering they have to go through daily. How can you take care of me if you don't even take care of yourself? Naruto shouts back, his anger is at his sister and how she neglects herself. I will not fight with you on this Naruto. Mai sits ready to eat and puts an end to the argument, but Naruto isn't done. Why not Nei Chan? Let me help you, I can work too. It's not uncommon for academy kids to work. Ino works and so does Kiba. They work with their family because they are expected to learn the business, not because they need to. You don't need to work either because I work enough for both of us. If you work enough for both of us why are we broke? Why can we never have a single day with each other? Why can't you just admit that everything isn't perfect and stop treating me like a kid? Because you are a kid, and you don't know anything. Mai yells over her brother. Naruto glares at his sister then kicks the chair he would have sat in if they could have a normal breakfast without worrying about money or his sister working herself sick. The chair crashes into the wall beside the door as Naruto runs out of the apartment and away from his sister. Naruto. Mai yells chasing after him out of the apartment. Naruto wait. Naruto. He can hear his sister's calls and shouts of his name, but he doesn't stop. He keeps running, as far as he can get from her the better. Without realizing where he was going, he ran directly for the academy where he ran into the one student he didn't want to see right now, literally. Sasuke Uchiha and Naruto both tumble across the ground due to Naruto's momentum. When they come to a stop both sprawled on the ground Sasuke is the first to rise to his feet. He was going to say something rude to the Uzumaki Dobi but he sees the boy as crying. Surprised because he's never seen Naruto cry, Sasuke leans down to help the other boy up. What's wrong Dobi? Sasuke can't stop himself from using the nickname for the blonde and is concerned he might make things worse but Naruto only glared at him before wiping his eyes and taking his hand. Sasuke pulls him to his feet and waits. Stupid Teme. 
Naruto whispers as he continues to wipe his eyes that will not stop tearing up. Sasuke ignores the comment, knowing that the blonde is not in the best mood and doesn't want to start a fight so early in the morning. If you are not going to stop crying and tell me what's wrong then I'm going to class. Sasuke starts to walk away but to both boys' surprise Naruto reaches out and grabs Sasuke's bag stopping him from leaving. I'm sorry Teme, Naruto says, wiping his eyes a final time. I, um, can we sit for a bit? I don't want to be alone. Naruto looks to the ground embarrassed at his actions. Sasuke nods then takes the other's hand and leads them to a secluded part of the academy. If anyone can understand how Naruto is feeling right now, it is Sasuke. Many nights after the massacre of his clan he cried himself to sleep wishing he were not alone. Once the two sit themselves on the ground Naruto curls in on himself bringing his knees to his chest and hiding his face. Sasuke sits next to him and watches the clouds drift by. Getting an idea, he nudges Naruto and points to the sky. Naruto looks up and follows the boy's hand. See that cloud, it reminds me of a shuriken. Sasuke says in his regular low town but a bit of pink has formed on his cheeks. He is only doing this childish activity to make the stupid Dobi feel better. That one looks like a bird with big tail feathers. Naruto says in a small whisper not sure what the other boy is doing but enjoying himself. Come on Dobi, I know you can do better than that. Sasuke challenges and smirks when Naruto glares at him then turns his full attention to the clouds. There, I see a horse. Naruto exclaims proudly. Sasuke looks to where the blonde pointed and sees a shape that could be mistaken as a horse, if you squinted. What do you see Teme? Well, I guess, Sasuke had to search a bit for something to look vaguely familiar. When he sees the shape, his face turns a deeper shade of pink before he points to the cloud. I see a heart. Naruto laughs at the other boy's embarrassment then at the glare directed at him. You sound like someone from Nei Chan's romance novels. Naruto says as his laughter quiets to soft chuckles. Naruto has a content smile while he sits next to his enemy watching the clouds, but the good mood shifts shortly after. Naruto curls back in on himself as he remembers the morning he had. Dobi, what's wrong? Sasuke asks, giving Naruto his full attention. Again, Naruto is silent for a few moments, long enough for Sasuke to contemplate going back to cloud watching. I had a fight with my sister this morning. Naruto says, Sasuke has never heard the other boy speak so softly, he almost missed what he said. Sasuke leans back resting against the side of the building, remembering. I used to have fights with my brother, he says into the quiet. Naruto raises his head and looks at his classmate. Sasuke stopped talking about his family shortly after they all were killed. They were mostly about him training me. I wanted to be just like him, but he always had work to do somewhere else. Do you miss him? Nordo asks not knowing who it was that killed the Uchiha clan all those years ago. Sasuke's eyes flash with a blazing fire full of rage but slowly die as the young ninja thinks. Yes. Sasuke finally says. Naruto, unsure about what to do, places his hand on Sasuke's arm comfortingly. I'm sorry, he says. Thanks, what did you and your sister argue about? The darker haired boy asks not wanting to linger on him any more than they already had. Naruto removes his arm to help pull his legs closer. Stupid money. He says, glaring at the dirt by his feet. If we had more money Nei Chan wouldn't have to spend so much time at work. She would have time for me, time for herself. Sasuke was almost sorry he axed when it sounded like the boy was complaining about not getting any attention, but then he said those last few words. What do you mean? Sasuke asks. She works longer and harder than anyone else at the hospital, and any job someone else doesn't want to do they give to her. She brings home piles of paperwork every night, stuff other people didn't want to do on top of what she has to do for the job she actually has. They constantly ask her to come in and cover for people and then get mad at her when she can't do the work because no one wants to teach her. She hardly gets any sleep, yet she insists I don't help and takes me out to Ichiraku whenever we have a few hours together. She says she wants me to live a normal childhood but that's never going to happen. We don't have parents, and that means Nei Chan has to be my parent. Sasuke was stunned. He knew his classmate had a sister he spoke very highly of but not that she worked so hard to make ends meet. The Uzumaki siblings were in the same boat as him, so they should be getting funding from the village. Why was she working so hard? Before Sasuke could ask anything, Naruto continued speaking. She was in the academy for a few years, 
I saw her scores, she was even better than Yuteme. She could have been the best Kunoichi in Kona history if she hadn't dropped out. Why did she drop out? Sasuke spoke before he realized he said anything. To take care of me, she gave up her dream to raise me and make my dream a possibility. Without her, I would never have even gotten this far. There were a few moments of silence before Naruto spoke once more, back to the uncharacteristically quiet voice. I don't want to lose her too. Naruto starts crying again at the thoughts that haunt him. It is a silent gut-wrenching sight that Sasuke can't watch. Instead of saying anything the Uchiha pulls his blonde classmate into an awkward embrace. Naruto stiffens for a single heartbeat before relaxing and resting his head in the crook of Sasuke's neck. Through his silent sobs Naruto lets out a muffled, thanks Teme. Sasuke chuckles, stupid Dobi. The two boys sit together in silence then, Naruto's tears dry but he stays nestled against his classmate. He had been so wrong about the brooding Teme, Sasuke did have a heart under that tough guy act he always showed. Sasuke was trying to keep his heart beat quite so the blonde wouldn't hear. Why was his heart racing? Why did his face feel warm? What was this feeling in the pit of his stomach that made him feel sick but giddy at the same time? So many questions swarmed his head, but he has to keep up this cool exterior otherwise his image might start to slip. In the far distance Naruto could hear a voice quickly approaching his and Sasuke's hiding spot. He didn't want to get up, but he knew that whatever happened today between him and the Tem would be gone if the two were caught together. They should head to class so as not to arouse suspicion. That is, until he recognized the voice, it's my. Dobi, what's, Sasuke starts but Naruto interrupts him. Get down. He whispers, pulling Sasuke into the dirt and under the brush they hid behind. Before Sasuke can complain too much, Mai appears in a flash of color. Naruto. Naruto. Her eyes are wide, and she looks terrified. Naruto please I'm sorry. She yells searching high and low for her brother. Her shouts quickly bring attention to herself and Aruka shows up next to Mai just as worried but about the young woman before him. Mai. What's wrong? You need to calm down. He tries to soothe the red head, but she is too scared to listen to him fully. Aruka sensei, I lost Naruto. We had a fight and I said some stupid things and he ran off. I can't find him. What if he hates me? What if he never wants to see me again? Oh Kami, I can't lose him too. Naruto, please I'm sorry. Mai says her voice growing more panicked with each word until she crumbles into terror. Thick tears cascade down her rose-colored cheeks and her voice sounds strained from all her yelling. Mai, it's going to be okay, we will find Naruto. Aruka tries once more to calm his one student but still she can't hear him. Sensei, I have to tell him I'm sorry. I never meant it, I was just frustrated and tired. I have to tell him Sensei. I have to find him, please. Aruka seeing that Mai is not going to calm down anytime soon uses a tactic similar to the Uchiha air, he grabs her and pulls her into a strong embrace. Mai struggles until she slowly tires herself out. She slumps into her old sensei's arms letting him rub soothing circles on her back. Stuck in the warm embrace Mai takes the offer given, she grabs Aruka's vest and lets her tears fall. Mai, I know you are worried, but you need to center yourself and tell me what happened. Then we both can go and find Naruto. Aruka whispers into red hair. Said redhead takes a few deep breaths calming her tears but not her shivers, until she can speak without losing control again. I fell asleep at the table and Naruto saw. We both ignored it, but I know that put him in a bad mood, he hates when I don't sleep properly. Mai tries to laugh but it sounds more like a sob. Then I said that I would take him for ramen today after his first exam. I wanted to celebrate, but he didn't want to go out. That got us arguing about money and I said something so stupid and untrue. He ran after that and now I can't find him, I have looked in all his hiding spots but there are no signs of him anywhere. I thought maybe he came to the academy in order to study for the exam, but I still can't find him. Even Hokage Gigi hasn't seen him. I'm scared Aruka sensei. What if he ran away from the village because of me? What if one of the villagers finds him and he gets hurt? I could never forgive myself. Mai clings closer to Aruka as she talks, his only response the entire time is to hold her tighter. Naruto is strong and smart, he won't get hurt that easily. And even if he came across someone, he couldn't outfight he can outrun even the best Jonin trackers, he will be fine. I'll go see if he is in any of the classrooms and if he comes to the academy today, why don't you go back home and get some rest? 
You look exhausted. Aruka pulls away from Mai to look her in the eyes. She shakes her head vigorously. Not until I know he is safe. As much as I trust you Aruka sensei I need to see him and apologize. Aruka sighs, Mai was always a stubborn student. All right, let's go look inside. Aruka leads the way with Mai right on his heels. As soon as the red hair of his sister is out of sight Naruto lets out a sigh of relief. After the relief of not being discovered fades the words of his sister sinks in. The blonde shuffles back into the spot he and the teme occupied before they hid. Well, Sasuke asks shuffling back next to naruto well what naruto asks well why are you still here you look like you wanted to jump into your sister's arm as soon as she appeared she's clearly devastated at what she said and you clearly forgive her why did you let them leave sasuke asks resting his head on his knees while looking at the blonde by his side this won't change anything naruto realizes reluctantly you heard her she won't let herself sleep until she knows i'm safe even though both of us trust Aruka sensei with our lives, she still neglects herself for me. I don't want to see her hurting herself anymore. Naruto grits his teeth angry at his sister once again. You're an idiot. Sasuke says standing and starting to walk away. Naruto's anger flips immediately to the Uchiha. What did you just say Teme? He growls, his naturally sharp canines exposed, and stands to be level with his enemy. Sasuke turns facing his opponent with his hands in his pocket. You are an idiot. Sasuke repeats. Naruto clenches his fist ready to fight. How would you react if the roles were reversed? That question stuns Naruto into relaxing his stance. You worry about her just as much as she worries about you. Be happy. At least you have someone to worry for you. With that Sasuke spins and walks away. Naruto slumps against the wall and slides to the ground. He really was stupid complaining about how bad his life was with his sister when Sasuke had no one. He is worried that the moment that they shared will now be forgotten. He doesn't want that, he and Sasuke may have fought for all these years but he did look up to the Uchiha. The moment they shared today made him feel like they could eventually be friends. That would be nice, Naruto caught himself thinking. He thought about Sasuke's words, how would he react if Mai were the younger sibling and he had to take care of her? How would he feel if she had run off angry at him? Just imagining the roles reversed and the look of hate on his sister's face directed at him made Naruto want to cry again. He didn't care if the whole world hated him, as long as his sister still loved him, he was happy. Mai felt the same way he knew. They needed to have a serious talk when the exams were over but for now, he needs to find his sister and be the first one to apologize. If Naruto wanted to end it all after only imagining his sister looking at him with hatred how would she be feeling after he did look at her full of anger and rage? No, he needed to find her, now. I'm sorry Mai. Naruto heard Aruka's voice coming from the side and he instinctively hid under the brush once again. We looked in all the classrooms, but he isn't here, do you know if he has any more hiding spots that he doesn't frequent often? I don't know. Sensei, I'm really worried. I can't keep this up much longer. Mai sighs combing her hair over her shoulder nervously. You don't have to for much longer if Naruto can pass the exam. The money he gets from his missions will help. And once I talk to the Hokage about how you are being treated at work, I'm sure he will have a few words to say to your manager. Aruka says placing a comforting hand on Mai's shoulder but she walks away from him. He can't do anything, I'm not an idiot sensei, I've known what she has been doing for a long time. I have already gone to Hokage Gigi. He can't do anything because it would seem like playing favorites to a non-essential civilian. Plus, if he did, she would find other ways to make my life hard. She knows how to manipulate people, she has been doing it her whole career. Mai says still combing her hair. Then why stay? Aruka asks. Mai gives a snort of laughter. Because it's my dream. I want to help people. I want to be a Irio Nin and help people like our parents did. I had to forget about becoming a ninja to take care of Naruto and I but I will not give up helping people. I may not be a ninja, but I can still help people to the best of my ability as a civilian. No matter what, I will not give up on that aspect of my dream. Mai says with conviction. You are right sensei, once Naruto becomes a genin I won't have to deal with so much because I can fight back then. But until that happens, I will endure for him. You could still be a Irio nin if you wanted. You have the skills necessary to pass and become a ninja. You can still surpass Tsunadeheim like you always said you would when you were in my class. 
Aruka smiles at the memory, Mai does as well. Maybe, after I know Naruto can support himself if something happens. I will not abandon him like our parents did. She clenches her fists but relaxes them after taking a deep breath to relax her shoulders. I'll check Naruto's hiding spots again, maybe he went to one of them after tearing himself out. Mai turns to leave but Naruto can't stand the idea of his sister running from him. Even if that is not what it is, it just looks that way to his overactive imagination. He rushes from his hiding spot, stopping a few feet away from his sister. She turned as soon as her senses alerted her to movement, her instincts preparing her for an attack. Mai looks at the ocean blue eyes of her brother, her heart is working its way into her throat. And Naruto? Mai stutters as tears flood her vision. Before you say anything Nei Chan, I want to say I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking about you and everything you have already gone through. I should be grateful for everything you have done for me and I am, I just don't like seeing you push yourself too far. I want us both to be happy and accomplish our dreams. I promise I will be Hokage, I will be strong, and you won't have to worry about me anymore. You can be an Iryo Nin, the strongest Iryo Nin there has ever been, I know you can. I'm sorry for what I said, and I really hope you can forgive me because I really want a hug now. Naruto blurts out. Mai looks at him for a second before throwing her arms over her little brother and letting her tears fall into his orange jacket. He hugs her back with a lot more strength than needed but Mai doesn't mind. Her brother is here and in her arms. Asking for forgiveness. Why is he asking for forgiveness when it should be her? She quickly pulls out of Naruto's grasp and looks down at him. I'm sorry too Naruto. I only want to make you happy and give you the same childhood as everyone else. You won't have it for much longer and I want to do everything in my power to make sure you have all the best memories before it's too late. I'm so sorry for what I said, about you not knowing anything. I was stressed from my shift. You know as much as you need to know Naruto, Kuso, you know more than you probably should if I'm being honest. I'm so sorry for making you feel so alone, could you ever forgive me? Naruto's answer came in the form of him plastering himself to Mai's stomach and clutching at her shirt. His silent sobs caused her to crumble as well until the two siblings sat on the ground clutching each other. Aruka stands off to the side watching the siblings and shakes his head. He loves the two younger ninja with all his heart but sometimes he has to admit, they can be a bit dramatic. Aruka clears his throat getting the siblings' attention, they break apart wiping their red faces. He sighs stepping close and bending down to their level. You two will turn my hair gray one of these days. He says messing up both their hair. Do you think you can still take the test today Naruto or do you want to rest and take it tomorrow? He asks, looking at the blonde. Naruto immediately jumps up full of energy. I'm ready sensei. I've been waiting three years for this, I can't wait any longer. He cries, clenching his fist with determination. Mai stands as well dusting off her pants. I should go too. I'm late for my meeting with the Hokage. Don't worry Naruto, you will be a genin this year. I know it. Mai pulls her brother close for one last reassuring hug. You can count on me Ni-chan, Naruto says, giving her a thumbs up. Just so you know I won't go easy on you just because you had a rough start to the day. Aruka says looking sternly at his disciple. Naruto grins unperturbed. Come on then. Naruto shouts, jumping in the air before rushing off to the first exam. Mai watches him go. Her mind flashes the moment he ran from the house earlier that morning but she shakes her head reminding herself of the loud grin he just wore. He can do this, he has been studying harder than any year previous, he really wants this, she says almost to herself. Aruka looks over to Mai, he wants Naruto to graduate just as much as she does, possibly more. That way he doesn't have to have Naruto in class for another year. However, he is an instructor to a whole class of ninja wannabes, he cannot play favorites. Before Aruka can say anything about Naruto and his graduation, Mai rushes off just as fast as her brother. Traveling at a much more sedate pace Uruka makes his way into the academy to start the exams with Mizuki. Mai knocks on the Hokage's door waiting for permission to enter. She hears Serutobi Gigi call her in and she opens the door. Sorry for being so late Lord Hokage. She apologies bowing her head slightly when she gets to the center of the room. It is no issue child. Now, what did you want to talk about? The Hokage says lighting his pipe and taking a large drag. It's about the ninja exams at the academy. I want you to pass Naruto this year. She says sternly. Serutobi's expression gives nothing away as he looks at her over his pipe. This is his third year, 
Last year he passed every exam except for the clone jutsu, we both know why that is. If he were given a different jutsu to present or given a pass like you did Rock Lee the year before, then I know he will make a great addition to any rookie team. Mai explains, her voice calm and steady but her heart is racing. She has not stood in the Hokage's presence personally in over five years, ever since she turned down the support of the village and Jiria Sanin. Mai and the Hokage stand in silence for a few minutes, neither one looking away or giving any sign of backing down. Finally, Serutobi takes another long drang of his pipe, holds it and lets out a stream of smoke before responding. All right. Mai stands in silence a second longer, she honestly thought he would deny her request and turn her away, but he didn't, he agreed. Really? Mai asks making sure she heard correctly and that he is not trying to trick her. Serutobi nods. I will have a message sent to the academy immediately to inform them of Naruto's exemption. If he passes the written exam again this year and performs adamantly for his other jutsu, then he will pass and be able to graduate with his peers. Serutobi Gigi says, giving her a proud smirk. Mai holds back her shout of joy and triumph, waiting until she is at least out of earshot of the office. Thank you, Hokage-san. Naruto will be so happy when he learns of your generosity. She says giving another deep bow. Serutobi chuckles. Now child, we both know this isn't out of generosity. To be honest, he should have graduated years ago. I don't know why none of his senseis didn't come to me asking for this when they too know of his circumstances he says standing from his desk to turn to the window overlooking the village. Pardon me Gigi, but if you knew he should have graduated, then why didn't you just make the order? Mai asks, walking up next to him. Because the Hokage cannot show favoritism. Someone else needed to make the proposal for me to give my blessing, he says. I see. Mai says going quiet for a few minutes before she speaks again. Who do you have in mind for his sensei? A very skilled ninja. Don't worry he will be in excellent hands. Serutobi says taking another drag form his pipe. Somewhere else in the village Kakashi Hataki sneezes unexpectedly. Whoa, someone must be talking about me quite a bit today. He says to himself and returns this attention to his Icha Icha book. Mizuki-san. A voice calls from above. Mizuki looks towards the voice to find a shinobi descending towards him. I have a message for you and Aruka-san, it's from Lord Hokage. The shinobi says holding out a scroll with the Hokage's seal. Oh, Mizuki takes the scroll, opening it and quickly reading the contents. He hums before rolling it back up and sending the shinobi away with a nod that he understands the message. Once the shinobi is out of view Mizuki tosses the scroll in the nearest trash bin and continues to the final exam. Alright, go whenever you're ready Naruto. All you have to do is create three copies of yourself. Aruka explains, encouraging his student the best he can as an instructor. Naruto stands in the middle of the room. Here goes a perfect double, Datbeo. Naruto shouts making the hand signs necessary for the copy jutsu. Chakra gathers around him and with a small, pop, one flat and pale imitation of Naruto lay slumped on the ground. Everyone stares at it, silent. Aruka gives a deep sigh breaking the silence of the room. I'm sorry Naruto, but you fail. Aruka says marking his paper. Mizuki looks between Naruto and his failed double before looking at Aruka. Master Aruka, this is his third time, and he did manage to perform better than his previous attempts. Even I'm not that great at copy jutsu. What if we gave him a break and passed him this year? Mizuki asks. Aruka shakes his head. The answer is no, Mizuki. Every student is supposed to create three exact copies, Naruto was only able to make one and his performance does not merit a passing grade. Aruka says standing and leaving the room. Naruto shuts his eyes and runs out the room not bothering to hear what Mizuki has to say as he calls him. He just wants to run and be away from Aruka and Mizuki, and Mai. What is he going to tell Mai? He promised that he would graduate this year. Mai sits in the house waiting for Naruto to come running in, his large smile plastered across his face beaming with pride in a brand new Hitai 8 replacing his old goggles. But he never comes. Night falls, the moon rises, and Naruto does not come home. She traded a lot of shifts to get this day off so she could spend it celebrating with Naruto, she worries that something may have happened. Did one of the villagers finally act on their murderous glares? Did Aruka sensei take him out for ramen and just forget to tell her? No that would never happen, Aruka knows how much she worries about her brother. Could something have happened at the academy? One of the students or their ignorant parents say something? 
Naruto, where are you? Mai asks the silent house. As she paces the house taking up the same role from the day previous, she waits for any sign of Naruto showing up. She just got to the nub of her left thumbnail, having already bitten the right as far as she could when the alarm sounded through the village. That alarm only meant one thing. Someone had attacked the Hokage. That's not good, the alarm means that the ninja responsible escaped. If they are in the village while Naruto is missing, they could run into him, hurt him. Without thinking, without hesitating Mai runs out the window believing the door will slow her down too much and rushes through the village. Looking for any sign of Naruto, this is the second time today so checking all his hiding spots comes easier and she can cross them off faster. After searching the whole village up and down, passing many Jonin and Chunin she knew that the situation was far worse than what she originally thought. Having nowhere else to look Mai rushes to the Hokage's temple ready to start demanding answers about what all is happening and if she needs to worry about Naruto, or if she needs to lend a hand in the search. Jumping through the Hokage's window sends a brief jolt of nostalgia through her heart. She used to jump through the window of this office every day after the academy let her out. It didn't bother how many times the Jonin guards tried to keep her out, she was always able to find her way in. Leaping through the window without any challenge makes her long for those younger years, for just a second, until she is viciously pulled back into the present. The Hokage is standing in front of his desk addressing the shinobi surrounding him. No one bothers to look her way as she shifts off to the side waiting for Serutobi to finish his debriefing. Once the shinobi leave the office in a streak of color, the Hokage turns to meet Mai's eyes. His expression shows how severe the situation is. Gigi, what happened? She asks instantly on edge. The way he is looking at her makes her heart ache. Why would he look at her with so much sorrow? She hated that look. He gave her that same exact look when her parents died and he handed her the tiny bundle that was the last thing her parents would ever give her, Naruto. I'm afraid it's Naruto, he says quietly, he stole the secret manuscript. Mai gasps, if her heart was aching before it is shattered now. What would that mean for Naruto? The punishment for such a crime is death, would the third Hokage kill Naruto? Would she let him? That answer came immediately. No if she had to take Naruto and run, she would they would be hunted but that didn't matter to her. She has to keep Naruto safe. Mai stops her mind from racing, just because the scroll is missing doesn't mean it was Naruto. How do you know it was him? She asks. To her complete surprise, Serutobi Gigi blushes. I caught him in my home, he was trying to get into the room holding the scroll. Serutobi explains the blush not leaving his cheeks. Wait. You caught him. Then why didn't you stop him? Hokage stays silent. You're saying that he somehow managed to steal the scroll and escape from under your nose. I know you're old Gigi, but you are not that old. You could have stopped him. Why didn't you? Towards the end Mai's voice rises in slight panic. Her worry for her brother is taking over her cool exterior. Serutobi clears his throat, turning his eyes away so as not to look at her. He used a new jutsu, one as was not prepared for. He explains, the light outside is fading but would that make the blush on the Hokage's face darker? If she looked hard enough, she could see that Serutobi's face is red. What the hell did he do to you? You look like a nervous boy after he got caught looking at his dad's porn. Mia tries to joke. She lets out a strained laugh. It is tight and short, more like a squeak she forced into a laugh. The red on Serutobi's face, if it's possible, gets darker. Serutobi Gigi, did Naruto flash you? To his credit the Hokage merely coughed once again before turning back to Mai and looking in her general direction. I was not expecting such an attack, he explains. Come, we can try and find him in my crystal. He says dismissing the conversation and walking over to the table with said seeing crystal. Mai stands behind the Hokage, letting the topic drop in favor of finding Naruto. She continues to bite her nails in worry while the Hokage searches. He is only looking in the village, why the village? Check the forest, it's Naruto's favorite place. She says finally after Serutobi has wasted too much time looking at the village. She did see a few scenes that made her blood run cold, a group of shinobi. She heard the words demon and kill before Serutobi switched views. He looked back at her swiftly checking her condition before continuing. Finally, Serutobi finds Naruto, he has the scroll. He is also with Mizuki, who is standing in a tree with large shuriken on his back and Aruka, who is pinned to a cabin with multiple kuni. What the hell happened? Mai asks but gets no answer. The two listen as Mizuki reveals his true intentions and reveals to Naruto that the fox demon is inside him. 
Mai's nail cracks and a dark aura begins to gather around her. Before she can react to the view in front of her Mizuki throws one of the large shuriken towards her brother. She can't stop the shout that escapes her lips, or the gasp that follows when Uruka uses his own body to save Naruto. That's it. Mai says finally before she disappears. Serutobi shouts after her but she is already long gone. Mournfully Serutobi notices that she moves almost as fast as her father. Mai races through the village heading in the direction of the forest. If she pushes herself, she may get there before too much damage is done, before Naruto gets hurt. He should have been killed when we had the chance. She hears an angry voice shout over some more cries of vengeance. Her mind tells her she should ignore the words and continue, find Naruto, and get him safe. But her inner beast longs for blood. Whoever spoke those words needs to die. She lands just behind the group of shinobi that were talking about Naruto earlier. Clearly, they cared more about gossip than finding her brother. That just made her blood boil more. Don't make the mistake of thinking of him as one of us. When we find him, he has to die. Another voice shouts over the group. The aurora gathered around Mai darkens further and expands. The shinobi frees suddenly. Slowly they turn to look at her. Just try it. She dares. To the shinobi she looks like a nightmare. Her dark red hair billows around her like irritated tails smacking the ground. The aurora around her almost solidifies to show a figure standing over her. Its eyes are red with narrow slit pupils. The figure bears its fangs, in the exact same way Mai bears her unnaturally sharp canines. Looking closer, her fingernails have also elongated, her chewed nubs grow long and strong into claws. A low growl escapes her throat reaching the ears of the shinobi. Unsure what to do, they run. They forget about their search for Naruto in favor of getting away from the real danger, his protective sister that also has a portion of the demon fox within her. With the shinobi gone, Mai can focus on finding Naruto, the dark aura still surrounds her. It may not dissipate until she holds her brother in her arms or until she rips Mizuki's arms from his torso, whichever comes first. She didn't realize how much time had wasted scaring the shinobi away. Some part of her still wanted to turn around and tear every one of them apart but a stronger part knows she has to get to Naruto. If not to save him then to properly explain. Getting to the forest took longer than she wanted mainly because without realizing it she was doubling back to search for the shinobi she wanted to punish. She had every one of their scents, if they ever crossed her path again, she would kill them. The darkness is getting stronger, her worry is turning to rage, and it is so hard to keep herself calm enough to think properly. She figured that the fight would have moved from the cabin it originated, but she worried when she finally got to the cabin and there is a lot more blood than she thought. The good news is that getting sent to track is easy. Mai tears after Mizuki's scent, he will be chasing Naruto and if she can stop him before he catches up, if he hasn't already, then she can take him down without risking Naruto. Sadly, for the bloodthirsty beast raging inside her, the fight is over by the time she catches up. Naruto and Aruka seem to be sharing a heartfelt moment and she can't bring herself to interrupt. At the sight of Naruto, the darkness dissipates completely, her worry and rage forgotten and replaced by relief. Congratulations Naruto, you graduate. Aruka says loud enough for her to hear. He stands back from Naruto, her brother's goggles in one hand and his own hitai eight tied around Naruto's forehead. Too happy to really say anything in return, Naruto just tackles Aruka in a hug that has them both crashing to the ground laughing. Mai wipes her eyes, her own happy tears having escaped while watching the moment. You little bastard. A voice shouts breaking the moment. Mizuki, where had he been? He is barely standing, his face beaten and bloody. In one hand he is holding a kuni knife. It all happens in the blink of an eye. Mizuki charges, his knife aimed straight for Naruto. Aruka grabs Naruto to shield him, and Mai jumps from her tree heading to intercept Mizuki. The demon aura returns in an instant, it has a more concrete visual now though. It coats Mai in a second skin, a skin that looks all too much like the fox demon. She is a blur as she lands just in front of Naruto and Aruka, she holds nothing back as she draws her arm back and then brings it forward. Mizuki is too weak to stop and he runs right into her moving punch. Her power sends Mizuki rocketing backwards smashing through trees and creating a crater in the ground. Her breathing is harsh as she relaxes and turns her attention to Naruto. Ni-chan? Naruto gasps out. The seal. Aruka whispers. Is still intact. Mai answers, closing her eyes to take deep breaths and calm herself. It's harder this time, 
The urge to kill Mizuki is too strong. She growls in frustration only to feel arms snake around her middle. Her eyes shoot open and she looks down to see a head of yellow. Naruto. He is hugging her when she looks like a demon. Hesitantly she hugs back, wrapping her arms around Naruto and squeezing him. Her deep breaths quickly turn to sobs as tears stream down her cheeks. They burn as they run over her skin. She still cannot calm herself enough to dissipate the aura and demon skin, her heart is racing too fast. To her surprise Uruka steps closer. She looks at him pleading, his parents were killed by the fox. The fox she looks like now, her hair mimicking the tails as they thrash. He doesn't hesitate, he joins in the hug. That does it. The warm comforting scent of her brother and her sensei is enough to bring the feeling of safety. The aura melts away and Mai is back to her normal self, wrapped in a hug by her two favorite people. Hey Naruto. She says breaking the silence, tears still rolling down her face. Naruto looks up to her, his own whiskered cheeks wet with tears. Congratulations. She says leaning down to kiss his head. He beams up at her his fear and sadness from a second ago gone in that instant. He jumps up to wrap his arms around her neck causing her to have to lift him off the ground. Aruka moves around Mai until Naruto is in the middle. She still needs to tell him. Tell him about the nine-tailed fox, what it did, how it was stopped and why their parents really died. But that could all wait. Right now, they are celebrating, and nothing can bring her mood down. Even looking back over to Mizuki doesn't cause her grin to falter. He tried to trick and destroy them, he failed, just like everyone who ever takes on an Uzumaki will. Come on you two, ramen's on me, Aruka says, causing Naruto to cheer excitedly. What about Mizuki? Mai asks not wanting the asshole to escape when they aren't looking. He doesn't look like he is going anywhere. We can leave him for the other shinobi, right now, he pauses ruffling Naruto's untamed hair. Let's go celebrate. Naruto. Mai calls into the house waking her younger brother. Come get breakfast. Naruto, still in his night clothes, comes rushing out of his room eager for the promised meal. Before he stuffs his face however he pauses remembering what his new sensei told his team the day before. I don't think I should nay chan. Kakashi sensei said we should skip breakfast today because we'll just waste it during training. He explains looking longingly at the food set out before him. That's stupid. Mai says bluntly. She transfers her attention from the stove to her brother with a blank look. You're a growing boy, you can't afford to skip meals or else you'll just waste away. So, what if you throw it up later, your body will still have gotten something out of the meal. Besides, I already cooked. Now sit down and eat. She says gesturing towards the table. Naruto does not need to be told twice, he bounces into his seat digging in before he even gets settled. Mai finishes her plate at the stove and moves to sit across Naruto at the table. This is one of their few days they can spend the morning together, mainly because Naruto has to meet his team so early. After they finish up Naruto rushes back to his room to change and Mai picks up after them. Naruto emerges from his room tying his hattie eight around his forehead. Mai, you don't have time to do dishes. I'll get them when I get home, you have to leave soon too, get ready. He says, moving to finish the cleanup. Mai sighs but lets him take over, she kisses the top of Naruto's head as she passes him on her way to her room. Naruto beams at his sister, happy to have a nice comfortable morning with her. The last few days felt almost like a dream to him. He learned that the nine-tailed fox spirit is sealed within him and Mai, he and Aruka were almost killed by someone they both trusted, and he met his new genin sensei, and he turned out to be a jerk. If he is honest, he would have preferred if some of those events had been a dream. Seeing Aruka sensei covered in blood with tears in his eyes scared him, he had never before seen the man show such a vulnerable emotion. Then there was Mai. The look in her eyes when Mizuki charged, he really would have preferred if that had been a dream. Mai comes rushing out of her room, tying her hair up as she goes and glancing at Naruto. His face is long with worry and he is standing by the sink not moving, just staring at the dirty dishes. She hasn't gotten to talk to him yet. To explain everything to the knowledge that she knows and has wrestled out of Serutobi Gigi. She herself still needs a few things explained. Like what happened to her the other night. She knows that she was possessed by the power of the fox, but why was it so hard to calm the beast? Why its form pooled around her in a veil? Why did she still long to taste Mizuki's blood on her tongue? Hey kitten, what up? Today is your first day with your team, shouldn't you be happy? She says tucking her brother into her side. 
He shakes out of his thoughts with a literal shake of his head then beams up at her. Right. Will you be home tonight? He asks, not daring to get his hopes up. My smiles. I should be. With you working as a genin I can put my foot down more. Things are finally looking up for us. Mai says turning to watch the sun start to poke over the buildings through the window. It's as if those rays of a new day are also the rays of a new life for Naruto and Mai as they both take a few precious seconds to watch. Soon the wall clock chimes breaking the moment and sending the siblings into a rush for items, clothes, and bags. Hold up Naruto, you almost forgot your leg pouch. Mai says tossing the small bag to the side where Naruto catches it and quickly fastens it to his leg. Thanks Nei chan Your planner's on top of the fridge remember, he says while picking up his backpack. Right, thanks. She says grabbing said planner from the top of the first then ducking inside to grab their packed lunches. Here you go. Do your best alright. She kisses the top of Naruto's head while handing him the lunch. She keeps reminding herself that one day he will be too tall for head kisses and she wants to get as many in as she can. Love you, Datbeo. Naruto shouts running from the apartment. Mai waves as he leaves. I love you too Naruto. She says to the now empty apartment her smile returning. Today was a rare morning where both of them were getting ready at the same time, not Mai waking up early to get them both ready for the day only to leave before Naruto even woke up. No, today was a good day that she would remember for a long time, until another just as rare and just as wonderful morning came to take its place. Alright Mai, time to get going yourself. She says grabbing her own bag heading for the door. She has a morning shift at the hospital but in the afternoon, she is going to see the Hokage and get the answers she needs. After locking the door, she is won her way. Naruto. What the hell do you think you're doing? Sakura Haruno, Naruto's new teammate screams. Naruto just plopped next to the fence while the three waited for their sensei who is an hour late and proceeded to use his backpack as a pillow. Sakura, upon seeing this, started to shout in protest even if she really wanted to go back to sleep as well. He's late. Naruto says as his only explanation. Sasuke Uchiha, the third member of the new Genin team, hums. Seeing nothing wrong with the idea Sasuke takes a seat next to Naruto closing his eyes. What is wrong with you two? Sakura asks as her volume lowers significantly. Napping. Sasuke answers. Nei Chan says that people need to earn respect. We were on time and waited for that jerk. Now he loses any respect I can give so I'm taking a nap while I wait. Naruto says then leans back, closing his eyes as well. What if he comes and we are all asleep? Sakura asks in a whisper scared that her sensei may actually be hiding waiting for them to do something like this. Then he can either leave and we can train another day, or he can wake us. His choice. Sasuke says finally. Sakura gives a quick look around before giving in. She leans against the fence but can't seem to get to sleep like the two boys next to her, so she pulls out a book and reads until her sensei shows. Kakashi Hitaki, new team leader for the fresh genin, watches his team from the trees on the other side of the training field. This is not the first time some of his students have fallen asleep before he arrived, but mostly they collapsed because they fell asleep standing up. These three chose to sleep or in the girl's case red. He wonders how many ate before leaving he will have to remind them of the consequences. Before that, he decides to take a stroll through town and give the genin a chance at more sleep. Uzumaki. Mai's supervisor calls over the hallway, she looks angry at seeing the civilian nurse out of uniform. Where do you think you are going? You still need to finish organizing the patient files, she says finally getting close enough to speak normally. I can't. Mai says plainly. She keeps her face casual but inside she is smirking. This confrontation has been coming for a long time and she could not be happier. I promised my brother I would be home for dinner tonight. Well, that's not going to happen. Get your ass back to work. The woman growls. Mai sighs feigning defeat and her supervisor straightens with a sinister grin. Mai has had a long time to plan this conversation, now it's just a matter on which tactic she will use. Blackmail, the truth, or intimidation. My brother passed his graduation exam a few days ago. I told you when I first asked for more hours that as soon as he graduated, I was going to go back to a single shift. So, I expect that you will honor your word and cut my hours and no longer have me on call so I can spend as much time as I have with Naruto from now on. Mai says adjusting her bag on her shoulder. Her supervisor blinks, then blinks again. No, he didn't, that's not possible. The supervisor says in surprise. He did. 
Now if you will excuse me, I have a meeting to attend then I need to get home and start dinner. Mai turns to leave but her supervisor grabs her arm halting her. I never said I would let you leave, you still need to finish the work I assigned you. The older woman says a vicious smile across her lips, she believes that Mai will submit like she used to and do as she is told but since things have changed Mai is forced to disappoint her supervisor. No, I don't. Mai says calmly. I am a nurse, not a secretary. My job is to assist patients before the doctor sees them and fill out the paperwork appropriate for my job title. Anything else is not my problem and you cannot force me to do anything. I did many jobs outside my title because I needed the money, that is no longer a factor. As such I will continue working, but only as my title requires. Mai waits for her supervisor to react, currently she is just staring at Mai her face in slight shock. When she finally speaks Mai is not surprised in the slightest by her words. I could have you fired for disobeying my orders. The woman says her anger is rising. She glares at Mai with so much anger that, if Mai cared, she would be shrinking. Just try it. Mai says her eyes going dark as her own anger rises and outclasses the woman standing above her. The supervisor backs away in fear as her compilation lightens a few shades. Mai says no more and neither does her supervisor, so Mai readjusts her back turns and leaves the hospital. She did her best to only use the truth but, in the end, she was forced to use a bit of intimidation. At least she didn't have to bring out the blackmail, pictures of the woman with another man and copies of their love notes. She will still keep the photos and notes, there is without a doubt, a chance her supervisor will try to retaliate. Alright, Mai says to herself as she exits the hospital into the early afternoon sky. Time to meet with the Hokage and get my answers. She takes off in a brisk run. The faster there the sooner she gets her answers. This sucks. Naruto mumbles to himself while tied to a tree stump. His sensei is off somewhere but he and his team are left to gather strength and think about their next text. Well, Sasuke and Sakura are gathering strength by eating, Naruto is forced to go without because he got caught trying to eat his lunch before his sensei noticed. He had been an idiot by charging the Jonin headfirst without a plan and without backup. If only he had taken a second to think like Mai always told him to, then maybe he would not be in this position. How did this even happen, he wonders, things had been going great before Kakashi arrived. They had taken the time to rest instead of waiting and he even convinced Sasuke and Sakura to eat something before their sensei arrived so they wouldn't be hungry during their training. It looked like they were already on the way to being a great team, but everything fell right back to the way it was as soon as Kakashi began the test. The three had split up and Naruto had rushed his sensei without thinking. Sakura got caught in a genjutsu because she was looking for Sasuke, and Sasuke got his butt handed to him because he took Kakashi one on one as well. It was like they had learned nothing from the academy, or like Naruto forgot everything his sister tried to teach him about friends and teamwork. That had been the point of the test, teamwork, they all failed. However, they had one last chance, if they worked together during whatever test Kakashi had for them next then they could pass. It all came down to if they could get past their bad habits and actually work together. Naruto wanted to believe that they could, but his hopes were not exactly high. At least the other two got some food in them, he had a full breakfast so he is not extremely hungry like he would be if he hadn't eaten. But watching Sasuke and Sakura eat did make him long for his lunch. His sister had put so much work into it too. Sasuke sees Naruto watching him eat out of the corner of his eye and sighs. Then making a decision that could get him in serious trouble he picks up an egg roll and offers it to Naruto. Naruto just stares at the food and chopsticks, Sakura gasps. Sasuke, Kakashi sensei told us not to feed him, she whispers, shouts looking panicked. He's no good to us as a liability. Eat. Sasuke demands pushing his chopsticks closer to his teammate. Naruto looks nervous but takes the egg roll quickly before his sensei has a chance to catch them. Here. Sakura says drawing the blonde's attention. She is holding up a small bundle of rice over her bento box. If we both share our food with you, we all can have the same amount, that way no one is more fed than the others. She says as her excuse. Thanks guys. Naruto says taking the bite of rice. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Sasuke asks both his teammates, when they just stare at him, he continues. If we are going to work together, we need to know each other's strengths and weaknesses so that if it's possible the others can compensate for the weakness. I have a few fire nin just use and a decent understanding of taijutsu. However, 
It takes me way too long to realize I'm in a gen justice and half the time I can't break out. What about you Sakura? Oh, Sakura is taken aback by being axed next, she was still compiling her strengths in her head. Sadly, it's not a long list. I can cover us if we get caught in a gen just you. I had the best scores, I got caught last time because I was distracted and not paying attention like I should have. Sakura looks down a light blush on her cheeks if she hadn't been so focused on Sasuke she would have seen that gen jutsu coming a mile away. She grits her teeth and continues. My mom has taught me a good amount of tai jutsu but I think you still know more than I do, Sasuke. Also, I know no ninjutsu, it was my worst score, I understand it but when it comes to executing the jutsu, everyone seems to be better than me. She explains disappointed with herself and her lack of skill. That's alright, Naruto and I can cover you with our ninjutsu and tai jutsu. Sasuke says reassuring his female teammate, if she starts doubting herself now, she may not be of much help later on. What about you Naruto, what can you do? Um, I have my cage bunshin, Naruto begins but falters realizing he has less skills than he thought he did. If I remember you had a good understanding of tai jutsu, at least you did when we spared. You were never in class when we learned about gen jutsu so I'm going to assume you can, t break one. Sasuke takes over seeing his teammate struggle. However, once he starts, he falters as well realizing that Naruto knows less than he and Sakura. He sighs, I think your cage bushin are all you really have when it comes to strengths, Naruto. We can use that, but we will have to work to get you caught up with Sakura and I, Sasuke finishes. If he had said those words in his usual tone, Naruto would have gotten angry enough to start a fight. However, Sasuke spoke as if he was disappointed, not in Naruto, but in the academy and their incompetence to train the blonde. So what do we do? Sakura asks remembering to eat and also share her food with Naruto. That's where I was hoping you could help Sakura. Sasuke says, shocking the pinket enough for her to drop her chopsticks. What? She squeaks out. You are the best strategist between us, if anyone can come up with a way to take Kakashi Sensei down it's you. Sasuke says, giving her a genuine smile, even if it is small. Ya yeah, Sakura, you can do it. Datbeo. Naruto encourages as well. Sakura smiles into her lunch, she was always told she was the smartest kunoichi by her teachers, but when it came to running drills in the academy everyone ignored her ideas for someone else's. It felt nice to have people looking at her for her strength. She nods then begins to think of their strategy, she also goes back to finishing her lunch as does Sasuke and they each take turns feeding Naruto. Off in the far distance Kakashi watches the three, it seems like they finally get the lesson he has been trying to teach. He was originally going to jump out when they shared food with Naruto but decided to hold off and see what the three did next. The Uchiha had a good idea, having them share their weaknesses. He even surprised Kakashi when he asked Sakura to be the strategist. In his eyes the team already passed his test, but now he is curious on what plan they come up with. He will give them a second test, the same as the first, only this time if they fail, they will have to run around the village as many times as they could until they drop from exhaustion. He smiles at the idea but smiles even wider at the thought that they may just be able to pass this time around. Over the years Pakun has had to pass by one or both of the Uzumaki siblings, never stopping to talk or observe for more than a minute or so but he has their scent locked in his memory. With Mai's scent on the tip of his nose, he rushes about until he finds the strongest trail, surprisingly the trail he found just outside the hospital is not leading him to the Uzumaki residence but the academy. Following the trail further reveals a distraught Mai in the arms of the Hokage as he runs his hands through her hair. Pakun was just about to dash away forgetting the message and whatever Kakashi wanted, it looked like Mai needed this moment and the last thing he wanted to do was interrupt it, but he was spotted by the Hokage. It seems we have a visitor. The Hokage says. Mai turns her head towards Pakun before moving away from Serutobi and wiping her eyes. I'll leave you to your business Lord Hokage. Thank you for your kind words, she says, beginning to turn but Pakun stops her. Actually, I have a message for Mai Uzumaki, he says, turning around so she can see the pouch with her note. Confused, Mai takes the note out of the pouch and reads. She is still confused even as she lets the Hokage see the note. Ah, Kakashi, vague as ever it seems. He is Naruto's new sensei, but why would he be sending you this message? The Hokage barely has time to finish speaking before Mai lets out a loud gasp and curses. I told Naruto to invite his team over for dinner. 
How much time do I have? Do you know Sir Hound? Mai asks frantically. Kakashi has another test for the kids, I reckon you have two or three hours. Depending on what he makes them do after the test. You can call me Pakun by the way. Pakun says as if this information will not send Mai into a panicked cooking frenzy. Three hours, I need to go. Mai rushes to the door but turns around at the last second to wave goodbye and toss a thank you, as she dashes out the door. There is a long moment of silence in the office while the two remaining individuals look at the door like Mai is about to burst back in any second. She doesn't but they still watch, soon Serutobi turns to Pakun. The small pug looks up to the Hokage and sighs. You want me to go with her, don't you? He asks, looking back at the door. I worry about her. She puts too much on her shoulders, if she starts to go overboard you can at least try to talk her out of it. The Hokage says picking up his pipe again and reigniting it with a match he had tucked in his robe. What makes you think she will listen to me if she hardly listens to you? Pakun asks. He can feel an itch just behind his ear that is starting to get annoying, he will have to wait until he leaves the Hokage's office before trying to get at it. He may be a dog but there are some things you shouldn't do in front of the leader of a nation. She called you Sir Hound did she not? Mai already has more respect for you than she does for me. Serutobi says as he looks out the window smiling. He catches the blur of movement that is Mai as she rushes from the academy grounds towards the market. I'll have to update Kakashi before I go, Pakun says, hoping that may get him out of babysitting duty. I understand. I would never wish to overstep your allegiance to your master, Serutobi says. Pakun relaxes, maybe that means he doesn't have to follow the girl. However, Kakashi does work for me, I could ask him if I could borrow your talents. Serutobi continues and Pakun sighs, there is no getting out of babysitting. Alright. Let me report then I'll be back on her trail. He then launches himself from the windowsill. He can hear a faint chuckle from the Hokage as he leaves which only makes him sigh more. To top it all off, Pakun realizes that the itch is behind his bandana and almost impossible for him to get without assistance, maybe Kakashi will help. Kakashi had no problem with Pakun accompanying Mai through her chores but he didn't get a chance to scratch Pakun's itch because he was just about to start the next test for his genin team. So, Pakun rushes around the market looking for bright red hair and trying hard to ignore the impossible itch behind his ears. Soon he has sight of said red hair and moves to wait for Mai outside the store she stepped into. Mai is so focused on her shopping she doesn't see the harsh stares from the villagers or the ninja hound sitting outside the spice shop. She doesn't even hear as he calls her name until she steps on him by accident. Pakun yelps when she steps on his hind paw and Mai jumps, almost losing her shopping basket. Pakun knew this was going to be a chore but he didn't think it was going to be one where he got stepped on, he had been trying to get her attention by walking in front of her, but Mai never looked away from her ingredients list. Oh. My I'm so sorry, Mai says looking around then down. Oh no, Sir Hound, I mean Pakun. I didn't even notice you, I'm sorry. Are you alright? She asks bending down to his level but not putting her hands on him. Pakun is honestly impressed, almost all civilians and a good number of ninja have tried to pet him during times like this, but she made no indication she would treat him lower than his rank. I'm fine, Pakun dismisses then gets on topic. The Hokage asked me to accompany you while you were out shopping, he says sitting and trying to get at the itch himself, it is seriously driving him insane now, but forgets his slightly injured paw and tries to scratch with it only to wince and put his foot back down. You sure that's a good idea, the market is overly crowded today, Mai says looking around at all the people. Staying in one place for too long is just asking to be trampled, but due to her reputation and her infamous temper has a good part of the crowd giving her room. Now that I have your attention, I will be able to manage myself, Pakun says. He is about to tell Mai that he can follow her from the rooftops, but he is interrupted by a bulky man stepping up behind Mai. Hey, stop talking to the damn dog and get out of the way, freak, he says glaring at the back of Mai's head. Are you sure you're okay, Pakun? Mai asks, ignoring the man completely, a civilian by the look of him. The stranger does not like her ignoring him, so he nudges Mai with his foot not at all gently. I said move your ass, I got places to be. His voice drops with his rising anger. Excuse me for a moment, Pakun, Mai says, then stands turning to face the civilian. I'm sorry, would you like to ask me that again, but this time use your manners. Mai says with an innocent smile and deadly sweetness dripping from her lips. No, move bitch. The man moves to shove Mai, 
but she grabs his hand stopping him in his tracks. The man stares at Mai shocked and slightly horrified. He is much larger than her and he looks to be stronger but all ninja or ninja in training know how to use their chakra to their advantage. What's your name, sir? Mai asks with a smile never leaving her face. Akio, Nakamura Akio. Akio says as if the words are pulled from him. Not letting go of Akio's hand, Mai reaches into her shopping bag and pulls out a small, leather-bound, brown notebook. One-handed she flips through the pages then stops, she shows the page to Akio and all color leaves his face. If you don't want Hisa knowing about this then I suggest you go around us and be a bit nicer from now on, Mai says, staring Akio down daring him to challenge her. Yes ma'am. I'm sorry I interrupted your conversation with the dog, he says trying to get his hand back from Mai's grip, but she just holds tighter. Pakun is a ninja of Konohagakure, you will show him respect, she says, making Akio wince in pain. Sorry, sorry. I'm sorry ma'am and Mr. Ninja. I'm sorry, I won't bother you again. Akio corrects himself, his fear making his voice waver. Great, now go around, Mai says, her innocent smile growing wider, this time genuine and even more fear inducing to Akio. Akio gets his hand back finally and sprints away making sure to give Mai and Pakun a wide berth. Through all this Pakun merely sat back and watched, if Mai wanted to start a fight that was her business. He is impressed with how she handled herself though, reducing a grown man to a quivering mess with whatever she had in the little brown book. He shivers at the idea that she may have something in there for everyone in the village, even Kakashi and the Hokage. Schooling her expression back to one of pleasant conversation Mai turns to talk with Pakun once again. I am sorry you had to see that, she says, sounding genuinely disappointed and sighs. Is there a way I may carry you without bringing you any embarrassment? She asks, embarrassed that she would ask such a thing to a ninja. Pakun thinks about it for a second, he had originally planned on staying above the crowd, but this may give him the chance to talk and understand the strange teen more. If it's not a hindrance to you, I can ride on your shoulder, he says standing ready for whatever decision she picks, Mai nods. That shouldn't be a problem. She moves her hair from her shoulders, so he won't get tangled or accidentally pull it and Pakun settles himself to clinging to her right shoulder just like he does to Kakashi. Mai stands once he signals that he is settled to resume her shopping. Kakashi saunters towards the three genin from the trees, taking his time and giving them plenty of time to hash out any last minute decisions they may have he would still be able to hear them, but they don't know that. Instead, the three students stay silent watching his lazy approach, he has Aichecha out pretending to read. Well kids, are you ready to begin? Kakashi asks not looking up from the book. Sasuke and Sakura stand facing their sensei ready for anything he will throw at them. Even Naruto looks ready to fight. He is still tied to the post, but he is ready for the second test where they can prove that they can work as a team and a good one. All right, but first, Naruto. Naruto hides his momentary shock by glaring at his sensei. Since you completely failed the last test, you will not be able to take this test. Instead, you will be sent home and can try for the academy graduation when it comes around again. Sakura, please cut Naruto free, Kakashi says, finally looking at the trio. Naruto and Sakura are staring at him in complete disbelief, Sasuke is glaring fiercely. No, Naruto says quietly unsure if he should believe the Jonin or laugh at him. No, I can't go back. I won't. I will be Hokage and that means I'm not taking any more steps backward. I'm passing this test whether you like it or not. Believe it. Naruto's voice rises until he is yelling at the end. Sasuke cuts Naruto free so they both can attack the idiot before them but Sakura surprises everyone. If you send Naruto back then you send us back as well, Sakura says, holding her shoulders back and her head high. This is the first time Naruto and Sasuke have ever seen Sakura defy an order from a teacher. We will not continue without him. Kakashi hums at her words then shrugs. Very well, Naruto, you may take the second test. Be thankful for your teammate standing up for you. Kakashi snaps his book closed standing to his full height. Now, shall we begin? All three ninja genin nod. The test is the same as before, but this time, don't hold anything back. Go. Kakashi says then the group separates. Sakura runs off to the left with Sasuke and Naruto going to the right to hide in the bushes. Kakashi lets them run for a few seconds before he says anything. Once he stops hearing movement, he puts his book away preparing for a surprise attack. 
I hope you have something more planned than coming at me one on one again, he says into the clearing. We have something a lot better up our sleeves, Sakura says as she, Naruto, and Sasuke all emerge from a set of bushes on the other side of the open field. Then a second group of genin steps out, then a third and a fourth. More copies of the genin emerge from various hiding spots surrounding the janin. Impressive. He says at the massive bodies before him. Are all of you copies or are the real ones scattered within as well? He says more to himself this time around. No one moves for a long while, the janin waiting for the copies to attack and the copies waiting for an opening that is not coming. Off in the distance, Kakashi spots an orange jumpsuit on the move, slinking between two other jumpsuit clad clones. There you are, Kakashi says before rushing the boy. He speeds through the large group and descends on the sneaking Naruto in a blur of movement. For his attack, Kakashi cuts off most of Naruto's chakra points immediately dispersing the clones around him. That is if the figure he attacked was Naruto. After his attack that should have tossed Naruto across the field, the boy popped in a cloud of smoke instead. So that was a clone, clever. He says tensing as he sees all the clones around him leap for an ambush. There are too many for him to escape in time and he doesn't want to potentially hurt the kids, so he doesn't attack immediately. Instead, he lets himself get buried in clones. Outside the pile, Sakura and Naruto get into position while Sasuke prepares for his sprint. Naruto makes ten more clones, he and five of the ten clones transform into giant shuriken to be taken up by Sakura and the remaining clones. I hope you're ready for this Naruto, Sakura says getting into the proper throwing stance. Deducing that the real students are not in the pile on top of him, Kakashi lets forth a wind jutsu that either blows the clones away from him or disperses them. Wind cyclone jutsu, he shouts with a spin. As soon as the clones are out of the way, Sakura and the five clones launch their shuriken. They spin towards the janin before he has time to stop his spin, but even at a disadvantage he dodges most of the shuriken and catches the last one. Nice try Sakura but you will have to try harder than that, Kakashi tells the Kunoichi. She smirks in response. Surprised, Kakashi looks at the giant shuriken in his hand. In a puff of smoke, it transforms back into Naruto who is holding a paper bomb. Naruto attaches the bomb to Kakashi's arm before slipping out of his jacket and rushing away from the explosion. Kakashi wanting to do the same tries to jump but the shuriken he dodged before transforming back as well, aiming for his feet they launch on holding him in place. The bomb goes off, but instead of an explosion, there is a bright flash of blinding light. Sasuke, having his opening made by Sakura and Naruto rushes at the janin ready to snatch the bells from his belt. Once again Sasuke barely touches the bells before Kakashi vanishes and reappears on the opposite side of the clearing. Damn it, Sasuke shouts as he falls face first into the dirt. Sakura and Naruto run to him, the spare clones dispersing at Naruto's signal. Kakashi waits for the three students to make a move, but it seems this was as far as they had planned. Well, he couldn't blame them, it was a good plan that utilized all their best skills and showed just how willing they are to use teamwork. Kakashi is proud of what they have accomplished. Ignoring their first failed attempt at getting the bells, everything since then has proven that these few genin are ready for what will come. Slowly Kakashi starts clapping his approval, the three genin stand in shock as they watch this strange man applaud them. Great job everyone, you completely failed, Kakashi says his grinning expression hidden under his mask. The only indication of his mood the confused students can see is the upturn of his one visible eye and the genuine joy in his voice. Am I the only one confused? Naruto whispers to his comrades. None of them take their eyes of Kakashi but Sasuke and Sakura shake their heads in response to Naruto. It seems you three are ready to be ninja after all, Kakashi says finally ceasing his applause. The three full-fledged genin stare at their new sensei with a combination of shock and confusion. But you just said we failed. Sakura points out her head spinning. You failed to get the bells. Kakashi clarifies. I never expected you to win against me. He pauses for a moment his expression getting serious. Yet. The three genin stare in awe at their sensei, he set them up to fail. Deep down they all knew that was the case, but they had hoped that their teamwork would prove Kakashi wrong. As your sensei, it is my job to train you three for any situations you may encounter. I will not go easy on you and I will not hold your hand. As a ninja, you must be prepared to take a life, or you'll die. He says making eye contact with each of his new students before changing his demeanor completely. Now, 
What shall your punishment be? Kakashi asks with a large smile under his mask. He places his hand under his chin mimicking a thinking pose as he watches his students squirm. What? Sakura gasps before she can stop herself. Having already drawn attention, she continues, her voice small. You said we passed. Yes, yes you did, Kakashi admits. But as I said, you failed to get the bells. So, now you will need some extra disciplinary action. Consider this inspiration for next time. At the continued confused looks his students give him Kakashi continues to explain. Every morning you will meet here, in training ground 3. If you are not already training by the time I arrive you will be given extra work at the end of the day. His students seem to be understanding his words, now it is time for him to drop the big bomb. I will also be testing you regularly, the same as today. Get the bells you win. Don't get the bells you lose. Every time you fail you must run around the village before I allow you to leave. The longer it takes you to pass, the more laps I add. The genin gape at their sensei unwilling to believe the words he is saying. How many times will you test us? Sakura asks noticing the information Kakashi didn't mention. Kakashi smiles. Sakura is starting to become his favorite student. Once a week, he says. His smile is back. His students notice that his one exposed eye shines with a mischievous glint. As if their exhaustion from the whole day collapsed on each of them, Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke fall to the ground as their legs give out. Once a week, Naruto repeats. His usual excitement gone, replaced with exhaustion and rising anger at Kakashi's smug expression. His legs and arms ache from all the running and fighting he did in the first test, but now his chakra levels are running low. Creating and transforming so many clones has Naruto struggling to regulate his breathing. He has never been skilled in the transformation jutsu. The quick rerun on the jutsu Sakura gave him was able to get him to transform his clones, but there were a lot of flaws he still has to work out. On top of it, the shadow clone jutsu can take a lot of chakra if he is not being careful. How many laps do we have to do today? Sasuke asks. He spent a lot of his energy during the first test as well. He was lucky he got such an easy task during the second test. He isn't sure if he could perform a kuten jutsu even if he wanted to. At least he isn't panting as much as Naruto. Kakashi places his hand back under this chin in thought. He makes his student wait, enjoying the increasing looks of fear as they too ponder how many laps he will give them. One. He says casually. Naruto gives out a short nervous laugh. His teammates' heads whip around to glare at him. He shrugs, embarrassed at the laugh but also relieved. It's just one lap. He says. I was worried he would make us do 30 or something. He lets out another short laugh. This time it sounds more like a relieved sigh. Sakura wants to explode and start shouting at Naruto, but she is too tired. Instead, she just asks. Do you know how big the village is? Naruto's face goes slack as he thinks. He starts counting something on his fingers before he looks back to Sakura. 15,000 kilometers, right? He asks, not entirely confident in his answer. Sakura stares at her blonde teammate. 15,700 kilometers, actually. Kakashi answers. Very close Naruto, you know the total area of the village, but do you know the diameter? The distance you will have to run. Kakashi asks crossing his arms waiting. He is exceptionally good at waiting. That's an easy one, 20. Even Sasuke turns to stare at Naruto. What? I've had to run around the village a few times escaping from Aruka sensei and the other Jonin after a prank. He explains as if everyone should have expected this from him already. They did, of course, but it still comes as a surprise. With or without chakra? Kakashi asks. Naruto immediately slumps. With. Naruto answers hesitant. Then it's settled. Kakashi crosses his arms again and leaning to rest most of his weight to one foot. You will complete the lap without chakra. All of you. Sasuke and Sakura both turn to glare at Naruto. Naruto sweats and begins scooting away from his teammates. Hey Sakura. Sasuke, don't look at me like that. I didn't mean to make it worse. It was an accident. I seer. Naruto stammers moving further from his teammates. Naruto. Sasuke and Sakura shout in unison quickly getting to their feet to race after their teammate. Naruto also rises to his feet and takes off as fast as his tired feet can carry him. Kakashi stays where he is and pulls out his favorite book. I didn't say, go. Oh, well. They'll learn next time, he says to himself. 
prepared to wait for however long it takes for his students to finish their laps around the village Kakashi settles himself atop one of the three posts to read. All right that should be everything, Mai says walking out of the last shop. She places the wrapped unagi into her shopping bag careful not to jostle Pakun too much and starts the track home. Let's see, Mai whispers to herself as she walks. The noodles will take the longest to cook so they need to be started as soon as I get home. Then I can work on the prep for the unagi and hiyashi chuka. I'll have to cut the cucumbers, lettuce, and ham into thin strips and the tomatoes into chunks. I'll also have to shred the crab meat before I start cooking the shrimp. Or should I start the shrimp before the noodles? I'll have to keep an eye on the shrimp while it cooks so I may not be able to do as much prep of the toppings as I would like. I'll have to cook the eggs eventually as well. And that's just the chuka. The hardest part of making unagi is the sauce. If I mess up the sauce, then the dish is completely ruined. Mai continues to plan silently to herself as she walks. Pakun tunes in here and there but mostly just ignores her rambling. That is until the itching behind his headband starts acting up again. What about drinks? Pakun says breaking Mai's rambles and hopefully distracting himself enough to where he doesn't notice his itching. Oh, yeah. I have green tea at home I can make a large pitcher and put it on ice, so it is nice and cold by the time everyone gets there. Do you think I'll need more? She asks slowing down. Don't you kids like melon soda or something similar? Pakun says shaking his head. It doesn't help stop the itch, but it alleviates it a bit. I don't know. Naruto never asked for it and I was never interested. Should I go back and pick some up? It may cut into my prep time, but I should still have enough money for a few bottles. Mai says beginning to turn around. Don't bother. I shouldn't have said anything. What you have should be more than enough Mai. Pakun says. Mai stands still for a moment pondering herself, but the slowly descending sun causes her to turn back in the direction of her house and continue. They arrive at the Uzumaki residence with one and a half hours left to the three Pakun predicted. Mai rushes to the kitchen placing her bags on the counter and Pakun hops off her shoulder. Free of the small dog Mai can move around without fear of him slipping off so she picks up speed. Before she begins cooking, however. She races into her room to get a medium-sized pillow to place on the table. There, you can rest here if you want. Taken aback Pakun stares at the pillow, he was only asked to watch over Mai while she shopped, he hadn't been planning to stay once they reached her residence. He didn't think Kakashi would be calling him anytime soon, so he saw no reason to rush out, plus he wanted to observe Mai more. He stepped onto the pillow and circled a few times before settling down on the soft pillow. If only his inching head would stop. Mai must have heard him struggling because she looks at him, an apron tied around her waist. Pakun, are you alright? She asks. She stops unloading the shopping bags to give him all her attention. I can't seem to get this itch. He says offhandedly. His back leg is doing all it can to reach under his headband but to no avail. Would you like me to get it for you? Mai asks looking at him fondly. He reminds her of Naruto slightly. He is a respected ninja but he can be stubborn about the silliest things just like her little brother that she can't help the smile that spreads across her lips. Pakun seemed a bit hesitant to let a semi-stranger touch him in a vulnerable spot but the itch was starting to drive him insane. He nods putting his back foot down letting Mai come closer. She takes his headband off first then begins to rub the top of his head gently. She stops suddenly her fingers repeatedly going over a specific stop, with her fingers running over it he can feel it as well. Um Pakun, I think you have a tick. Mai says worriedly. Would you be alright if I got it off for you or would you like to go back to Hitaki-sama? Again. Pakun says nothing just nods. Mai moves to the counter and pulls out a tweezer from one of the drawers, when she returns to Pakun she adjusts until she can hold a majority of his fur away from the tick before positioning the tweezers as close to the skin as she can. She starts pulling gently until the tick finally lets go. There, that's out. She says dumping the tick into the sink and running water. Don't scratch just yet. I need to get some rubbing alcohol. She says then dashes out of the room again. Instead of scratching his head, he gives a full body shake, halting the feeling of small things crawling on his skin. Okay. This may sting. Mai says returning with a cotton swab and a bottle of rubbing alcohol. She places the soaked cotton over the tick spot decontaminating it before rewarding Pakun with the head scratches he originally wanted. And voila, you are a tick-free little man. She says awkwardly. Pakun looks at her confused. Sorry, I usually work with small children. It's fine, I'm used to it being as small as I am. 
he says scratching his head once again out of habit. Still, I shouldn't have diminished your stature. I am sorry, she says again before returning to set up the counter for cooking. Apology accepted, Pakun says. He notices Mai's shoulders relax as she continues prepping her cooking space. Hum, they should be done soon, Kakashi says looking up from his book. Guess I should go meet them. He waits a few more minutes before finally putting his book away and shunshined his way to the edge of the village. It took him a couple of minutes to find his genin, but he found them all collapsed on the ground, panting. Well, it looks like you all had fun, Kakashi says jovially looking down at his students. The genin glare at their sensei, too tired to do anything more. If you all are done, I believe we have been invited to dinner. Don't keep our hostess waiting, he says before dashing away in a blur of movement. He is a monster. Sakura says through gasps of air. Datbeo. Naruto says moving to his stomach to maybe push himself to his feet. He may be tired but the promise of his sister's cooking spurs him into movement. Hn. Sasuke agrees not moving. Mai cops the cucumbers, ham, lettuce, and tomatoes with practiced grace. She may not be a ninja, but she does know how to wield a knife with excellent precision. Pakun sits on the table, a pillow under him for comfort, and watches the girl before him. The two exist in peaceful silence for a long while, the two enjoying the soundless company of each other. Mid chop Mai goes stiff, her shoulders tense and her blade ready. Pakun notices the change but before he can ask what happened Mai spins around and throws the knife out the large open window. Mai. What's wrong? Pakun asks, jumping to all four, his claws out ready for a fight. Mai picks out another knife from the chopping block and holds it in a loose grip but says nothing to her companion. Now is that any way to treat a guest? A voice says just outside the window. Familiar to Pakun but unfamiliar to Mai. Kakashi pulls himself up to the window and crouches to fit on the frame. Pakun relaxes but Mai stays rigid. Kakashi raises a knife causing Mai to attack. She moves so fast the only thing Kakashi can perceive of her movement is a streak of red caused by her hair. He hasn't seen this kind of speed since his late sensei, Mai's father. Who are you and what are you doing in my house? Mai asks, the knife in her hand coming up to Kakashi's throat. Her talent with a blade and her speed are the only things she has in her arsenal, however, Kakashi notices. She seems to have had enough training to pass the most basic of ninja tests, something any first year academy student could do, but that's all the training she has. Yes, she has a blade next to his throat, but it isn't even close to the major artery. Plus the skirt she is wearing will make it difficult to pursue if Kakashi decides to run, and to get out of this position all Kakashi has to do is step down and off the roof. She has the potential to be a talented ninja, but currently no skill whatsoever. As I mentioned, I'm a guest. You invited me yourself. Kakashi says instead of retreating. If I'm not mistaken, it is considered rude to threaten one's guests. May I come in? Mai doesn't answer, nor does she remove the blade. She stares into Kakashi's one eye searching for any trace of a lie in his face. She can't find any but still doesn't feel like backing down. Kakashi sighs and looks over to Pakun who lays back on the pillow to watch. A little help? Kakashi asks. Pakun lets out a quiet bark but makes no move to help his master. Pakun? Kakashi says, sounding worried. Mai catches Kakashi's attention once again by moving the blade closer to his throat. If she wanted to, she could cut the fabric covering his face. You may want to start answering my questions, she says. Kakashi looks down at the angry teen. Her deep blue eyes are the same color as her mother's. It almost hurts Kakashi to look at her. He once had a small crush on Kashina when he was much younger, so staring at her daughter is making his face hot. Not for the first time he is glad his mask covers so much of his face. And as I said, you invited me. Would you like your knife back? Kakashi says, somehow keeping his voice calm even if his heart is racing and a knot is trying its best to settle in his chest. He moves the hand with the kitchen knife so the blade is resting on his palm in such a way that if he tried to wrap his hand around it, he would be grasping the blade. Mai glances at his hand. Noticing the non-threatening position of the blade she takes the knife from him. With a swift flick of her wrist, Mai readjusts the knife so she can use it as another weapon. She positions the second blade on the other side of Kakashi's neck effectively trapping him. Kakashi stays still not moving, Pakun finally decides he should help his master. Mai. He says drawing the attention of the teen. 
As he does the door opens revealing an exhausted looking Naruto with Sakura and Sasuke right behind him. Naruto stares at the sight in front of him confused. Nei chan What are you doing to Kakashi sensei? He asks not stepping further into the apartment in case he needs to take his teammates and run. Mai whips her head around to stare at Naruto, her face a mix of shock and confusion. This man is your new sensei. Mai asks, too shocked to move. Naruto nods. Mai looks back to Pakun, he nods as well. Then Mai returns her gaze to Kakashi, she looks him up and down. He looks like a janin, so why hasn't he escaped her hold? Choosing to believe Naruto and Pakun, Mai takes a step back moving her hands to her side. Thank you. Kakashi says instinctively moving to check his neck and the fabric covering it. Mai bows quickly and shallowly saying, I apologize for my misunderstanding. Having said her part to Kakashi, Mai turns to face Naruto and his team, her attitude doing a 180. Welcome, please come inside and get yourselves cleaned up. Dinner will be ready in a few minutes. We can have introductions once you're clean. She says as she walks back to the counter. She deposits the knives into the sink before grabbing another knife to finish cutting the vegetables. Relieved that the situation has resolved itself Naruto smiles and bounces into the kitchen to kiss Mai on the cheek before heading to the bathroom to clean up. Come on, if we're not cleaned up by the time dinner is ready, Nei Chan won't feed us. He laughs, motioning for Sasuke and Sakura to follow him. The two abandon Jenin swiftly but cautiously move through the kitchen and pass Mai so as not to anger her for any reason. Kakashi follows their lead by cautiously stepping off the window seal and walking over to his canine companion. Care to explain? He asks Pakun. Pakun stretches before answering. I think you deserved it, boss, not everyone takes kindly to you appearing whenever you want. He says looking up at Kakashi. Before Kakashi can respond, Mai clears her throat. You don't look very dirty. Wash your hands please and then help me set the table. The bowls are here. Mai reaches above her head to point to the cupboard with the bowls then reaches down and half opens a drawer, and here is the silverware. Six bowls should be enough to feed all of us, and I don't believe Pakun needs chopsticks. I don't think I should stay Mai, bad manners and all to have a dog at the table, Pakun says, readying himself to leave. Mai stops his thought. Is it also considered bad manners to enter someone's house without their permission? Mai casts a quick glare in Kakashi's direction. I would like it if you would stay, Pakun. I guess it's settled then, I'll stay. Thank you for having me, Mai. Pakun bows his head though the redhead can't see. Don't I get a say in this, you are my Ninkan after all. Kakashi fakes being hurt at Pakun and my making decisions without him, he doesn't mind what his Ninkan do on their own time as long as they come to his aid when he needs them. No, three voices say in unison. Mai from the counter, Pakun from the table and Naruto just stepping into the kitchen looking significantly cleaner with Sasuke close behind him. I don't know what the fight is about but I'm on Nei Chan's side all the way. Naruto bellows as he moves further into the kitchen. Is your other friend still getting cleaned up? Mai asks, noticing one member missing. Sakura said she needed to fix her hair or something, Naruto says taking a seat. Realizing his defeat Kakashi moves to set the table just as Mai acts of him. He sets the chopsticks around the table waiting for Mai to finish with her chopping for him to reach the cupboard just above her head. She doesn't move by the time Sakura enters the room and takes a seat on the other side of Sasuke putting the brooding pre-teen in the middle of his teammates. Pardon my reach, Kakashi says as he reaches above Mai, she makes no move to attack him but also halts her chopping. Once Kakashi moves away, bowls in hand Mai plates all the cut up toppings onto a separate plate. Kakashi barely finishes setting the table before Mai finally moves. In a flash of quick steps and easy movements that only come from years of practice and the comfort of being in one's own home, Mai has the rest of the food plated and set on the table for a free-to-serve style. To top the sight off she pulls a pitcher of green tea from the fridge, beads of sweat running down its side. All right, we have unagi don and hiyashi chuka with fresh iced green tea. However, if anyone wants, I do have everything needed for Mujika. Let me know if you need anything else, otherwise, dig in. Mai places the pitcher in the middle of the table for everyone to reach and sits next to Naruto leaving the only spot available for Kakashi next to Sakura and Pakun. Itadakimas, Naruto says and grabs his chopsticks. This essentially breaks the tension the other young genin had with being invited to the Uzumaki residence and the sight they witnessed upon their arrival. 
Sasuke and Sakura also pick up their chopsticks and begin serving themselves. Thank you for inviting us, Uzumaki-sama, I'm Haruno Sakura. It's a pleasure to meet you. Sakura says once her plate is stacked with what she wants. The pleasure is all mine, and please call me, Mai. I'm not that much older than you, there is no need for honorifics. Mai says smiling genuinely for the first time since Kakashi entered the building. Sasuke, never one to be rude, plates a few chuka toppings and noodles onto his plate. His first choice is to try the tomatoes, Mai, expertly sliced into wedges before introducing himself. My name is Uchiha, Sasuke. Thank you for having us, the food is quite good. He says making eye contact with Mai for a brief second before looking back at his plate. Thank you Sasuke-kun. Naruto praises my cooking to the sun and back, but it is nice to know he isn't only doing it to save my feelings. Mai says making herself a bowl of unagi don by filling her bowl with rice then adding the unagi and its sauce on top. I would never, Naruto shouts. Your cooking is the best in the world Nei chan I could never lie about that. He says looking disgruntled that Mai would even think he could lie to her. She knows all his tells and knows exactly what to say to get him to spill all his secrets voluntarily. I know bud. Mai says leaning over to kiss the top of Naruto's head. Mai is pleased to see that he is secure in himself and with his teammates that he doesn't feel the need to bat her away, instead, he closes his eyes to take in the warmth of her lips on his forehead. Make sure to grab some vegetables to go with your noodles, Mai says teasingly. Naruto finally blushes and races to put the vegetables on his plate. Oh, Nei Chan. This is my new sensei, he is going to teach me how to be the best ninja in the world. Naruto says after he notices that Kakashi has not said a word since sitting down. I never said I would do that. Kakashi retorts. His shoulders slump since he will have to explain his duty a bit better to his youngest student. I said I could make you all great ninja with formidable skills, but only if you listen to my word as if it were law. Yeah. Okay. Naruto says not listening. Instead, he is regaling his teammates with some of the other dishes Mai has made and telling them the stories associated with some of them. Mai, however, is looking at Kakashi confused, but instead of making a fuss now, she will wait to talk to him after dinner. For now, they all enjoy the meal chatting contently until everyone has had their fill. Holly Havana this chapter is long. It was originally going to be a small one-shot type of chapter but at some point, it got away from me and ended up being over 7000 words. I am so sorry for how long it has taken me to update, with the length of the chapter and me finishing up a semester in school it was hard to find the motivation to finish. I hope the long chapter makes up for how long I have been away but again I am sorry. I am curious, however, do you all like the shorter chapters or longer chapters? Please leave a comment or review letting me know your thoughts. For those curious, 15,700 kilometers are approximately 6,062 miles. I should say that the area is actually 15,700 square kilometers but Naruto isn't good at math, so he doesn't know the proper way to tell the area. He knows how big the village is because of how much of it he has traversed while being chased by Jonan. The thing he is thinking about is a way Mai explained the size of the village to him, I haven't figured that out yet, but maybe I will. If you have any ideas let me know, I'm about as good at math as Naruto. Also 20 kilometers is around 12.5 miles. Not a long distance when you think about how fast ninjas can run, with Chakra. Without Chakra Team 7 is probably about as fast as an experienced runner but not Olympic level, so 12 miles is going to be difficult but not impossible. If you are interested in where I got my numbers from the village size, I used the estimates from Taker Abowi and Debasis Kantia, from Quora. Thank you so much for your patience with this update and all your encouragement. Hopefully, this chapter answered some questions a few had and clarified others. Thank you all for reading and see you next time. Thanks.